The Quran uses two different spellings for Salat. Is it a mistake? Salaamu Alaikum, I'm Moses and today we're going to talk about this very interesting topic. This video, by the way, is video number 7 of the series called Salat in the Quran. Did you know that the Quran, one book from one author, from one source, for the same term as Salah, uses two different spellings? Here is evidence behind what I was saying. On the right hand side are some of the ayat where we find the term as salat written out in this particular form with this tashkil, where we find alif, lam, sad, lam, waw, ta, ta marbuta. If we take out the l, what we're left with is sad, lam, waw, ta, ta marbuta. But if we look in the same mushaf, in the same Quran, we find salat written out with an alif instead of waw. We find Sad Lam Alif Ta. So on the right hand side we have Sad Lam Wow Ta Marbuta, and on the left hand side we have Sad Lam Alif Ta. Same book, same author, the same term, spelled out two different ways. This observation merits a question why are there these differences? Is this an archaic leftover of previous times? Or, as some argue incorrectly, is this an evidence that the Qur'an has grammatical mistakes? Or is there a specific way that the Qur'an uses these two different things? Now some might also ask another question at this point. Are we wasting our time pondering on this seemingly minor little thing? Because at the end of the day, this has got nothing to do with Hidayah, and I agree with that. It is not a matter of life and death, and I would agree with that as well. The meanings or the mafum of the Qur'an does not change by this minor variation of spellings, and I would agree to that as well. So, how do we answer this question, or how do I answer this question? I would like to present this ayah. مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ They did not value, respect, honor Allah as He should be. Allah is strong and powerful. The warning that Allah tells us, gives us in the Qur'an, that of not giving him his due reverence applies not just to his being but to the kalam that he gave us as well, i.e. the Qur'an. We have to try, we should try and get past the surface meanings if we are to really ponder the Qur'an. If we are to get past the surface level meanings then we have no choice, no other, I would say, academic way but to really think carefully what the words say and why they appear differently to us. Before we continue, a quick reminder. This is the seventh video of the series called Salat in the Qur'an. Because others have asked where to find this series, if you were to start from the very beginning, go to the channel, look for the playlist icon. You will find this either from the desktop or your mobile device. Look for the playlist called Salat in the Qur'an and there you will find all of the videos in this series in this particular place. You will find all the other six videos before it and you will also find the other videos in the series to come in the same place. Having said that, for terms like Salat, Wudu, Sajda, Ruku', Masjid, Aqimu Salah, Durud, I will not talk about them today because those topics have been covered in the past videos. So if you are interested about those key terms, I would highly encourage you to go back to them and watch the videos there. Without wasting any more time, Let's proceed to the proposition that we will like to offer in this video. Why the two different ways Salat is written out in the Qur'an? Proposition number one. When an entity starts performing a Salat, Sad, Lam, Waw, Ta, Marbuta, their particular application, interpretation or form becomes their Salat, Sad, Lam, Alif, Ta. In other words, whether it's a person or an entity or an association, once they start forming these two-way connections with others in the society or those around them, the way they engage, the way they form these relationships, the way they sustain them, the way they grow them, the way they are set up, the way they evolve, the way they interpret it, according to their time and needs and requirements, that becomes a salat particular for them. On this slide are all of the ayat where we find the Salat coming in with the second spellings that we talked about. Sad, Lam, Alif, Ta. 
Now, it is quite ironic that the spelling which is uncommon in the Quran is the more common spelling we find in Arabic and in Urdu. However, in the Quran, the ayat containing this particular variation of the spelling is way lesser than the number of ayat containing the other spelling, which is Sa'ad Lam Waw Tamarbuta. On the right hand side are all of those ayat that I've listed out here for those who might be interested to go through all of them one by one. Just a few stats for those who are really keen. As I said, there are nine ayat where we find this second spelling of the Quran, which is the more common one for us, but the uncommon one in the Quran. One time it comes with the Damir E, as in for me, Salati. One time it comes Salatuka, your Salat. Six times we find ayat of the Quran containing Salatuhum or Salatihim, as in their Salat. And one time we find Salatuhu, his Salat. Here, these are all of those such ayat. As has been the case in this series so far, the pattern that I've established is that I offer a proposition that I have come to by pondering the Quran through my subjective faham. Once I do that, I offer Quranic ayat as evidence to see whether the proposition I offered continues to hold or not. In the same vein, let's apply the proposition that I offered on the Quranic ayat and that is what we will be doing next. The first ayah is in front of you. This particular ayah has been understood quite strangely by the traditional circle of Islam because somehow or the other the meaning that they take away is that whenever you recite the Quran in front of others in a ritual prayer, in a congregational ritual prayer to be precise, you should not be too loud and you should not be quiet when you recite the Quran. Well, that's fine. But the biggest problem that we'll find as we read the ayah is that this very same understanding that the traditional circle takes does not apply on at least two salat that they carry out, i.e. Dhuhr and Asr, where they do not speak out, where they do not recite the Qur'an at all. Whenever they recite the Qur'an, just the Imam reads it in his heart and the people standing beside him don't even read the Qur'an in their own hearts. So what does that say about the understanding? I will leave that to the side. Let's read that ayah. قُلْ اللَّهِ أَبْدْعُ الرَّحْمَانِ أَيَّنْ مَا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى I'd like you to pay attention to the spelling, the tashkil of salat in this particular ayah. Say slash declare, call him Allah or call him Ar-Rahman. Whichever name label you use, to him belong the best asma labels. And don't show off your form of doing the two-way connections. وَلَا تَجْهَرْ بِصَلَاتِكَ And don't show off your form of doing the two-way connections, nor be completely silent about it. وَلَا تُخَافِتْ بِهَا وَابْتَغِي بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا But follow a course in between. So instead of the Qur'an here talking about how to recite the Qur'an when the Imam leads out the ritual prayer, the hukum, the order is completely different. Whenever we do our salat with the ta, the long ta, our form, the way we do that salat, when we encourage and form these two reconnections with other entities, we should neither try to show off nor be completely silent over the good deeds we do. So if a person or an entity does something good as part of this particular form of salat that they have taken out for themselves, they are not to brag about it, but yet they are not to keep completely silent about it either. Because if you brag about it, the intention behind your noble deed becomes corrupted. But if you remain completely silent about it, you don't tell anybody about it, you end up not encouraging others to follow suit. Hence, the Quranic Hukum, which is really clear, which I think is completely understandable to a rational mind, where it encourages those who do good to seek the middle path. One more little observation, and I'll move on to the next ayah. Ar-Rahman, not the topic of this ayah, but it does mean more than just the most merciful, the way we normally translate it. But we'll talk about it, inshallah, one other day. Let's look at another ayah. And in this particular ayah, we'll find two 
terms that I think are very important. Musallin, and we will see Salatihim, as in people who are doing their Salat, and a certain quality about them. Let's read this ayah. In al insan khulika hulua. The insan, mankind, was created restless. Ida massahu ashar jazua. Touched by adversity, he is fretful. Wa ida massahu al khair manua. Touched by good, he is ungenerous. Illa al musallin. Except for the ones doing their duties. The ones carrying out their salat, the al musallin. الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ These who are constant in their forms of salat connecting with others. إِلَّا الْمُسَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ Except for the ones doing their duties, these who are constant in their forms of salat where they connect with others. وَالَّذِينَ فِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ مَعْلُومٌ And these in whose wealth slash resources is a rightful share لِسَائِلْ mahroom for the one who seeks, asks and the deprived so to reiterate the point no, al-musallin are not those who are doing a ritual prayer whether by themselves or as part of a jama'ah I'm sure you and I know many of those ritual prayer doers who remain ungenerous who do not give, who do not share so despite them being da'im, constant in their ritual prayer, they do not meet the definition of al-musallin in this ayah. Those people who in their amwal consider it their duty to give it to those who do not have it. Let's read another ayah where Allah makes a declaration. Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Successful are the ones who spread peace having believed Allah's deen. Al-mu'minun. Not the ones who utter some specific words in Arabic in a certain formulaic construction, who then somehow, by the virtue of that declaration and certain ritual actions, get promoted from being simple Muslims to mu'minun. No, the mu'min of the Quran is one who spreads peace, who has believed in Allah's deen. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِرُونَ these who are knowingly humble in their forms of duties, the two-way connections they form with others. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ أَلَّغْوِ مُعْرِدُونَ These who avoid nonsense. These people, these people, who when they form the, the two-way connections with others the right way, in order to spread peace, in order to have prosperity in their societies, who stay away from nonsense. Whenever they see any wastage of time, they do not become involved in there. Instead, they are da'imun, as we saw in the previous ayah, who in the salat, they are khashirun. These people, these mu'minun, they are the ones who are successful. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is the law of Allah. To hammer on on this really clear point, I would like to read out the whole of Surah Al-Ma'un. أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينَ فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ Have you considered him who denies the deen system of Allah? It is he who mistreats the one who has nothing or is seriously disadvantaged. وَلَا يَحُدُّ عَلَى دُعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ And does not encourage the feeding, nourishing of the poor. فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُسَلِّينَ So, woe to those who engage in two-way connections. الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ These who are heedless of their two-way connections with others. الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ These who put on the appearance وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَاعُونَ And withhold the assistance. So no, a deen is not a ritualistic form of religion that we see today fossilized in whatever happened in 1200 years um, Baghdad. The deen as mentioned in the Qur'an, is a system of Allah. And whoever does not follow that, despite whatever labels they might want to give to them, they do not do the actions that are mentioned in here. Instead of looking after those who have nothing, they mistreat them. Instead of nourishing those who seek that nourishment, they push them away. These are the people who are unaware of salatihim, of the particular form of salat that they should be carrying out. 
Instead, they are showing off. They continue to put up appearances and they continue to withhold the assistances that they should be giving out to others, to others within the society as part of their salat. This salat is nothing to do with a ritual prayer. This salat for the musalleen who are on the right path is to do with others in the society. The true musalleen are the ones whose salat in their mujtama, in their society, is with the yatim, the miskeen. These are the ones that if we establish our connections correctly with, will allow us to become part of the musalleen. One more little point, and then we'll move on to the summary of this video. Yatim, once more, in the Quran, is not a girl who has lost a father, who you can marry one or more than one as a favor to them because you end up taking care of them through multiple marriages. That is not what the Quran talks about and is something I've covered in detail in the Urdu series where we looked at those particular ayah to clearly articulate that the Quran does not talk about multiple marriages for men at all. No four marriages for men, unfortunately, for those who would want that to be otherwise. Let's, let's summarize this video, shall we? The Quran is precise, is exceedingly precise in the way it uses his vocabulary immeasurably more so than my use of English when I wrote my PhD thesis. I still remember when I was writing my thesis and I used to go and talk to my supervisors and all those other externals, they would constantly tell me that you have to be careful, extremely consistent with the way you use language, the terms that you devise, the terms that you use when you refer to phenomena. You have to be not just consistent, not just standard, but you have to remain unambiguous in your usage of language. I find the Qur'an on a completely different scale when it comes to this one particular criterion. And what we saw in the Qur'an and what we've seen so far, I think is evidence to that. Whenever the Qur'an says, As-salat, sa'ad lam, wow, tamar buta, it means something specific. And when it says, salat with a sa'ad lam alif ta, then the shade of the meaning is not the same as the first variation. The meaning is specific, it is slightly different. It's a different shade of the same mafhum than what we found in the other ayats. That is precision. To summarize the summary, I will read out the proposition one more time. When an entity starts performing the as-salat, sa'ad lam wa'u ta'marbuta, there, their particular application, interpretation of form becomes their, their salat, sa'ad lam alif ta. As I was going through this video, I had a few other miscellaneous observations and I thought, why not talk about them whilst I've got the chance? So, here we are. Number one, did you know there is no plural of salawat with aqimu in whole of the Qur'an? The Mus'haf never says aqimu as salawat but always it says aqimu as-salat. Why is that? Well, in my understanding of the Mus'haf, this observation is supported by what we proposed in the very first video of this series. As-salat is not a specific ritual prayer, whether it's being done by an individual or being done as part of a congregation, but instead as-salat of the Qur'an is, in the abstract sense, the formation of two-way connections between entities. And that is why we do not find in the Qur'an aqimu as-salawat, but aqimu as-salah. Secondly, Qur'an, in my study, does not use this spelling of salat, sa'ad lam wa'u tamar buta, with damair, such as ka or hu or hum, for words like salatuka or salatuhum, with this particular format, except for one ayah where Shu'ayb and his people are being talked about. I'll come to that. But every single time, whenever we find a damir, a pronoun, associated with the term salat, the spelling that's always used is this one, sa'ad lam alif ta marbuta, or sa'ad lam alif ta, the long ta. Returning to that one ayah, the one occasion where Shuraib and his people are having a chat, a conversation, and the people say, as salatuka, ya Shuraib, o Shuraib, does your salah, their reference is not to the form of salat, as in this sa'ad lam alif ta, that Shuraib was carrying out, but as salah, as in sa'ad lam wa ta, the principle of the duty, the principle of forming positive two-way connections that Shuraib was telling his people about, and the people were not being happy about it. 
For those who are really interested in that, I would encourage you to go have a look at all of the ayats that are associated with the Qissa of Shuraib to see exactly what happens. You will come away with only one observation though, if you were to go through those ayats studiously. There's no way, there's no way absolutely, that the people of Shuraib and Shuraib are talking about as salah al harakiya al kahnutiya or the Salat that we today call or know as a ritual prayer. There's no way that the Qur'an in that Qissa leads anyone to believe that the talk was about a ritual prayer with physical bowing, with physical prostrations, and all those other acts that we find today. Thirdly, I would like to include Aqimu Salah in this particular video as well. So let's build on what we've learned so far. If one, an entity, society or an individual, if one wishes to form two-way connections, as in as-salah, sadlam, wow, tamarbuta, then he follows the command of God, command of Allah, which is to aqimu as-salah. When he has fixed his connection, when that association, when that country, when that entity has established, has strengthened, has forged this connection with other entities around them, then the implication of Sa'ad la mu'awta salat becomes the particular form of salat Sa'ad la mu'awta that is associated with that entity. So you start out with that, you aqimu it, and then it becomes so. Fourthly, it's something I've mentioned before, but I think it's worth bringing out again. It's, it's worth talking about once more. The Qur'an, Allah, never talks about as salah either of the spellings, as Imaduddin, as the pillar of the deen. That concept has got nothing to do with the Qur'an. Lastly, even though I thought that was quite obvious, because some people did ask, I thought I'll mention this in passing. No, the Qur'an makes no mention of any, any number of sujood or ruku' that one has to do in a ritual prayer. Why is that? Is it because the Qur'an is incomplete? No. More this. This concept of the ritual prayer that concept is not present in the Qur'an at all because that in itself as a concept is alien to what the Qur'an talks about. The Qur'an is one thing and the ritual prayer is another thing. The two are not from the same source. My final words today. This is my fahm of the Mus'haf at this time. This is my subjective understanding. I ask no one to follow me but to verify the evidence I offer based on the Qur'anic ayat. If it is sound, fantastic. If it is not, correct me or improve on wherever I was weak. Now, lastly, lastly, I will re-emphasize this particular topic that we talked about today is, is probably not as important a topic to a lot of people. Is It's not the matter of life or death. It's not a matter of hidayah. But as I have been saying throughout this channel, the Qur'an deserves a thorough academic treatment, and that was my humble attempt at it. Let's finish today with one last ayah, and this is the order of Allah for me to declare to you my salat. قُلْ إِنَّنِي هَدَانِي رَبِّي إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ دِينًا قِيَمًا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا Say, declare, my Lord, and this is what I'm doing, my Lord has guided me towards a straight path, a right system, the Milla way of Ibrahim the upright. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Who was not one of those who added to Allah's deen. قُلْ Say, declare, إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say, declare, Moses, my form of two-way connections and my nusuk and my life and my death are for Allah, the Lord of the realms, domains. Until the next time, Salaamu Alaikum.